So the next section for TA southbounders is the town of Watomo to the town of Tamaruni. Again, part of my pronunciation. The town of Tamaruni is a big logistical hub and bubbles up a whole lot of hikers, but I'm going to talk more in depth on that at the end of the video as we get closer. So the section is about 108.4 miles, and when you leave the town of Watomo, you have very dense pockets of steep ups and downs. As you can see here, we you go from hill to hill um, pretty pretty much instantly as soon as you leave the town itself, you start these roller coasters and it's going to be the flavor of pretty much the entirety of the miles all the way to the next town of Teikuti, part of my pronunciation. It is very steeply up and down. The elevation profile does make it look worse than it actually is. You can still hold a pace through this type of terrain but it is a lot of climbing. Um, it's those micro ups and downs I've talked about in New Zealand again. These ones are a little more prolonged, more prolonged climbs and more prolonged descents. But overall, as I said, you can hold a pace through here. There are a couple pockets of mud. The forest portions are not too muddy like some of the other track you've gone through and the forest sections are also very small. For the most part, you're gonna be doing these types of climbs and descents, going through these rolling hills, um, kind of from cattle pasture to cattle pasture. You can be crossing over many, many fence styles. <laughs> so get prepared for that. That's all of North Island, New Zealand is fence style country. So as you start getting closer to the town of Teikuti, the trail itself starts to get a little more overgrown. There are nice markers that point you in the right direction, but the trail does, it, does start getting more overgrown itself. And once you get in that about three mile ballpark outside of the town of Teikuti, the trail goes through this kind of scenic reserve. You go cross over a bridge as you see here. I think you're allowed to legally camp in the scenic reserve since the camping on either side of it is illegal camping as it is private property. But there's a quick pocket in here if you want to get closer to the town of Teikuti that you are allowed to camp. Also in that last three miles to the town, you start doing more I don't know if I want to call it cross country or what, but there are posts that kind of show your way. Once you cross this fence style right here is when your cross country begins. It is a small pocket. It's about half a mile to a mile. And this is what I mean by cross country. You can see the markers like on that dead tree ahead of me, but there's no really single defined path to get through there. So you'll be going a little bit slower. It is the TA, that is also an overarching theme. You can see Magpie in the distance there. You kind of just go up to this little saddle and then you drop down the back side and you're on two track for the last two miles into the town of Teikuti. And the two track does go through a lot of cattle, cattle land. Sometimes the cattle are on the road themselves. They're not aggressive cattle, not like the bulls. We still haven't talked about that yet, but once we get to that portion of the videos, we will. But very pleasant, pleasant road. There is a dog at this area, two dogs, I apologize, as you see here. They appear aggressive, but their owner seems to be home much much of the time, and I haven't heard of anybody that has gotten bit by those dogs. They're just loud and boisterous and will let their presence be known, say, this is my property. <laughs> so this is the town of Teikuti. It is a full service town. Many hikers probably try to go here besides Watomo because it does have more motels. It has a very big grocery store that you can do a full resupply at. Um, it has more restaurants in the town of Watomo itself. I described in the previous video why we didn't, just to link our miles up better. But this is a bigger town and it's eight miles from the town of Watomo. So if your miles link up, you find accommodation here. You can find a lot of food, find a lot of services. So when you leave the town of Teikuti, you're going into this portion of walk called River Walk. And this River Walk, it is very dependent on the weather you've had. So. If it's been raining, it's going to be way slower than if you're having a pleasant day, like a no, non-rainy day. So the track itself, the overarching condition of it is not too bad. There are portions that get narrow, and that's kind of what will slow your pace down the most. As you can see, you have those grasslands, you have this forested area. The initial, the initial ascent into the trail itself is pretty good. There's one pinch point that kind of signifies when you're going to start getting into the really, really slow terrain. And this pinch point is this bridge. So once you cross this bridge, you get to the next side and there's this sign here that says five hours to get out of this river section. We were able to cut that down a little bit, but 
it's a pretty accurate accurate measurement um these miles will be slower and again the slowness comes from just the narrowness of the track it's not necessarily sketchy it's just so narrow that you have to put one foot directly in front of the other foot so the river miles you do a lot of ups and downs these micro ups and downs to get over these fences and it just tries to keep you up and down out of the riverbed itself and out of where the river has kind of eaten away at that bed as you see here magpie is going across a single track and that's what i mean by the narrowness of it it's just one foot in front of the other you can't really step to the left you can't really step to the right you just have to be directly on that single single track so as you get closer to it you will have to de deal with some fallen trees um, that will eat into your pace as well but then there's this one little kind of middle of nowhere table that I do believe some hikers camp at. There's a nice water source point one for southbounders before that if you do not want to drink out of the river. It's a nice cold flowing creek. So kind of have to do a little bit of jungle gymnastics to get through some of these trees. <laughs> but it, it just adds to the flavor of the day. As you can see, Magpie was super happy about that. So the flavor, as I've talked about, up and down, up and down, up and down. You can see trail maintainers have come through here and tried to cut into the track. This is actually really wide for the single track that you've been experiencing to this point. They've cut into it to try to make it a little more manageable, but with the amount of erosion, just the sheer amount of flooding with the river, and then also with just the New Zealand climate in this area of a lot of rainfall, it just washes out that riverbank. Really, really difficult to maintain. So once you get through there, you start getting into these more pockets of longer pastures that you can really hold a pace on. There are still these micro moments of difficult track, but pretty much after that bench you have two, three miles and then it starts to get quote unquote easier. You have this one last very steep ascent. As you can see, I'm pointing out where it goes up and it goes very steeply up this hillside and then kind of hugs it for a little bit. But this is your last steep ascent until you hit this sign the Mango Quad North Campsite, part of my pronunciation. Again, a very popular spot for TA hikers to camp at because of it's one of the only legal spots to camp in this surrounding area. And if you go past it, you have to push harder. So we ended up going past it and I'll talk more about that when we get there. But after that sign, about a mile after that sign is this wonderful water source that it's flowing, it's clear, it's cold. I would recommend filtering it again. You don't know what's above that with sheep and cattle um, and what have you. So this is the popular camp spot that I just mentioned. As you see, there's about 10 tents there. There is a water tank. There's a little cooking shelter. They do ask for a co-donation because it is on somebody's property um, that they manage it. It is a very popular camp spot. So if your miles link up, it will be a good spot to camp. If you decide to continue on this day, your, the rest of your day becomes pretty much two-track road into paved road. And this paved road will be your future for a little bit until it transitions back into gravel. And once it transitions into gravel, you have a long kind of gradual ascent to the top. Um, there's not really a clear definition on what the top is. It just pops you on top and you're good. And if you want to camp along this road, there is a pine tree forest that you can camp in. Um, it is not per se private land. Um, so miles link up you can do that as well so the next day most people will crank out this road in one day because it is about 17 or 18 miles of pure road walk i didn't mention it previously but when you come out and that road sign on the mangawa road there is an alternate that some people take through the town of bennydale if they would have taken a right where we took a left um it goes through state highway 30 and it just puts you through a town quicker some people decide to hitch it, some people decide to walk it, but there is another alternate that you can go. It's just kind of two sides of a circle. So we're going down the official part of the track here and very, very windy. I don't know if it was our timing or what, but be prepared for a lot of wind. It seems like this is a wind tunneled area. I don't know if it's coming off the tops of these hills or what, or it's just a broad sweeping valley, but have some good wind gear because it's just going to be whipping whipping through you um, and it makes it quite quite cold you can see I'm shaking my head there I'm not a big fan of just wind ripping through the ears so you're getting closer to the timber trail and the timber trail is a very popular it's one of the great rides of New Zealand and you end up walking the majority of it so there's a car park right at the base where you can take lunch or potentially camp there's a camp spot close by there's also water there 
through a spigot, but it is very sulfuric. Sulfuric? I pardon my pronunciation. It, sm it does not smell great, so I would recommend going further into the track itself and finding a natural source. So when you connect into the timber trail, it's about an 80 kilometer bike path. It was built for bikers, but there are many people that walk it, especially TA walkers. And you start off gradually ascending and you're ultimately ascending up to this mountain called the Pura Akaya Mountain. And you junction off the timber trail for a few miles to go touch the summit of it. And part of my pronunciation of it, again, um, I filmed it here. That's how you pronounce it correctly. So you junction off the timber trail to get to this summit. And you go up this track. The initial ascent itself is pretty straightforward. It is pretty steep in the beginning to get to the top. But it is well worth the climb. Um, it is well worth the view. It is very beautiful up there. There is some erosion through that track. Again, I think this area gets smacked with rain quite often. Beautiful forest going through there. So once you end up getting closer to the top, it does have a few boardwalks that makes your miles easier. You can still hold a pace on the entire climb of that. So this is the top of the mountain I was describing. Again, very, very windy. I would not personally recommend camping on top of there. It would be pretty aggressive if a system moved in and there's also no water up there or close by. So once you get to the top you have to descend the trail that connects back into the timber trail on the back side and as you see here the trail says it's not maintained by the DOC. We thought it was going to be way worse than it was. There is a couple kind of limbs and brush that overhangs the trail itself but it's really not that bad. Your pace on New Zealand, especially on this descent, is going to be standard, right within that two mile per hour ballpark. There are a lot of pockets of erosion through there. You just have to kind of go slower and pick pick your battles and pick where you want to put your feet through there. So when you connect back into the timber trail, you have bike path, gravel, walkway, very flat. You have these elevational changes in the timber trail, but since it is graded for bikes, overall they're pretty easy to walk. And once you get past this you start getting into these beautiful swinging bridges along the timber trail that um, kind of are the scenic and postcard type pictures that most people have from this portion of trail. It's these massive massive bridges that they connect from hill to hill and thankfully they did because if not you would have to drop steeply down to come back up and that's just kind of the flavor of the rest of your day depending where you're going um, you cross three four five bridges and they aren't like some of the bridges you've crossed prior. They are very structurally built well, so you can cross it together with a partner, with a trail family. It's not a single-use bridge. About a mile before Harrison Creek Camp, there's this water source that I'm shown filtering here. Harrison Creek Camp is called Harrison Creek, but it doesn't actually have a water source there. So I would recommend filling up there if you're a southbounder and you plan on camping there. And it's right around the 26-27 kilometer mile mark. So this is Harrison Creek Camp. There's only one other person when we were there, but it can potentially fit upwards of five to ten tents. Um, you could fit a good amount of folks there. So this area to the timber trail, you may not think it may get chilly, but you're still at such high elevation that it does have the potential to get cold. As you saw, I had gloves on, my full puffy, my full jacket on. So the next day you have many, many options to choose from. Some people decide to bike this t as TA hikers, some people decide to walk it. You can split it up into two days, three days, four days, however you want. There are a lot of camping options along the timber trail. Since it is built for bikers and mostly tourism, there are amenities along the way. So around this 37 kilometer mark, there is a place called the Timber Trail Lodge. We did not check into it. Um, we did not look at the, most of the information. If you're interested, you can Google it, check it out. and. This is it here. It's junctioned off to the left that you can get to it. And once you go past that, you will end up getting close to another popular place called Camp Eric. We did know about TA hikers that stayed there. You can pitch a tent, you can glamp, you can also stay in like a pseudo motel, I believe. And they do have food upon request. Um, they don't have a food store, but you have to coordinate for the food. So if your miles link up, we also know that's a pretty popular spot. Again, I'm not the wealth of information on that. Google that if you're looking for more information on that. So this is a broad overview of the Timber Trail. And it shows what we're hoping to do for the rest of the day. We're hoping to get to the very end of it. Since it is bike path, very well graded. There's not a whole lot of obstacles, rocks, routes. 
you can hold a standard pace of anywhere depending three miles to four miles if you jogged it you could even get up into that four and a half five even faster if you so desire so you cross more bridges and it's just it's easy walking um it's really beautiful you can kind of soak soak in the forest soak in the views um get a good podcast i would recommend to have a good podcast good music good audiobook have a good trail family good hiking partner um so, some some people to whittle away the time especially if you're walking it again you can rent bikes you would coordinate with that within the town of tamaruni um when you were in the previous town of Tekudi or tomo and they would meet you at that initial trailhead i showed a few clips ago well more than a few clips ago um and they would drop the bikes off so you could could ride it so as you continue on more bridges are in your future <laughs> more and more bridges they're very very scenic though you hit this little four-walled shelter i don't know if you're actually allowed to camp there but it does have a spigot of pipe water that you can access the water sources through the timber trail are pretty pretty frequent most of them are like these spigots you do have a couple natural sources um, so just be cognizant of your water and once you pass kilometer 60 you start getting closer to these smaller shelters i showed you one previously but they also have these newer smaller built shelters it's right around this mark the thousand k mark for ta southbounder so pat yourself on the back you made it a thousand k about one third of the way there this is the smallest shelter i was talking about it's more of a rest shelter i don't know if you're necessarily supposed to camp in them but if it's extreme weather and bad weather you can find shelter inside of those things so after that you start kind of a gradual descent into the bottom of this trail called the Angura Road, part of my pronunciation. But you start a gradual descent into there and there's a couple springs along the way. Again, preference here. If you want to filter it, filter it. If not, it's going to be filtered directly by that rock. Very good stuff. So along the gradual descent, you go through this cave and it's a quick cave. I would say about a hundred yards maybe. You can see the other side once you get around this corner and um, very pretty, very wet, cold and damp in there. So watch your footfalls just so you don't slip. And this is on the descent into Angara Road. And Angara Road, again, is a very popular camp spot because it's one of the only legal camp spots if you decide to push past Camp Eric and those little smaller shelters. And it bubbles up a lot of hikers right before the town of Tamaruni. We camp there. They have a little shelter. They have water accessible. They have this large flat grassland that you see here that can fit many, many tents. So most people this day will push into the town of Tamaruni as we did. I put Kelly's Motel on this title here because it is the one of the most popular motels for TA hikers. One, because of its affordability and two, just because of its friendliness to the hiking culture and hikers in general. So when you're walking into Tamaruni, the rest, the entire entirety of your day will be two track gravel road paved road mixture of all of those and i'm going to take the chance here to really talk about the Tam town of tamaruni this is a big logistical stop for a lot of hikers i'm not going to talk a lot about this stuff the scenes you're seeing here because it's road walk very straightforward you can hold a pace but the town of tamaruni is where you have to start coordinating your canoe trip so on the te aurora trail unlike other trails there's a canoe portion about 100 miles long that is the official trail. You have to canoe this river. There's really not a whole lot of ways to fully connect your steps on that. You can take an airboat if you don't really don't want to canoe and then walk a long road walk. But 99% of TA walkers, I would say, you do the canoe. So there's a Tamaruni canoe hire outside of town that is very friendly to TA walkers. And people can camp there. They do host hikers for free if you are using their services, but you have to coordinate with them um, for three days, four days, five days, a week down the track to get the canoe. So that's why a lot of people bubble up in this town of Tamaruni for that coordination. And I'll get into that in this next video here because it shows the canoe place and the canoe hire, which is about a mile or two out of town. So you can pop into town, resupply, then go straight to the canoe hire, or you can stay in town. There's great places to eat. They have a giant new world, which is a grocery store that you can resupply at. I would just resupply for this section to get to the river itself and then once you go to the canoe hire they will shuttle you back into town to resupply for the river so you can get heavier food um, better choices than just regular protein bars and backpacking food so that's that section it's going to get very logistical here very quick so let's go get it <laughs> 